Okay, so what I really want to show you is basically how easy it is to experiment with SNARKs right now. Um, and uh, I, are people ready? Okay, if you guys are coding, um, please sit down. Okay, cool. So um, as I mentioned before, there's actually tons of open source libraries right now and open source tools uh, and platforms for you to actually code with SNARKs today. Uh, one of the ones that I'm going to show you right now is called Zocrates. Zocrates is a project that actually is funded by Ethereum Foundation, um, and they've been working on it for a long time. And the whole concept of Zocrates is that you're able to use what's called a DSL, a domain-specific language, to kind of code as you normally would in the pseudo-programming language, and all the crazy stuff about arithmetic circuits and, and quadratic arithmetic programs and polynomials, that gets done for you, uh, and it does kind of output you some uh, variables for you to understand what's going on, but you as a developer don't have to know exactly how uh, the SNARK construction happens in the background. Um, and then the really cool thing about Zocrates in particular is that it allows you to uh, have a verifier, which is a solidity file. And that verifier you can actually deploy on Ethereum such that you can basically generate your proofs off-chain so uh, anyone can do so, and then it's verified on-chain. Um, so it allows you to do really cool things. So one of the things that I'm going to show you is we're going to be solving puzzles, which I know doesn't sound super exciting now, but it will. Okay. So um, for Zocrates, uh, because it's fairly complex and it uses libsnark, which is a C++ library, and a, kind of a bunch of other dependencies, the easiest way to get started is to actually use Docker. So if you have Docker, um, it's, it's free. You can install it any, um, on any software or any, any operating system. Um, the thing about Docker that's really confusing for me anyways is that it's a virtual machine. And so in order for you to actually have a folder that you can use on your host machine, um, you basically have to have a volume for it. So for me, um, this is how I would restart my Docker instance. So I would say, uh, please mirror this directory um, to, to my Zocrates instance. OK, cool. So this, um, one moment. Oh. So if I were to run this command, I'm now in my um, Socrates Docker instance. So basically, all the libraries that are needed for me are already precompiled here. And I have a code directory. Uh, so if I go into my code directory, um, I see that I have all the fi all the files that I actually have on my host machine. So this is how uh, my host machine looks like right now in terms of what my code looks like. So uh, for my presentation, I don't know if you remember, but the thing that we did was we tried to prove that x times y plus 4 equals 10. Um, so this is actually as how Zocrates works. It's an extremely simple language, um, and you can do pretty advanced stuff with it. So one of the things that you can do is you can do something like a pre-image of a hash. Um, so for example, I want to prove to you that I know something before it was hashed. And then they're able, so they basically provided a bunch of these helper libraries for you to have pretty, some, some pretty advanced stuff. So for example, here, I'm trying to say, OK, I have a private x, and I have a, pri a private y, and I want to prove to you um, this equality. So from, uh, from our previous slides, we basically did it by hand, where we had like our two constraints, and then we went into polynomials, and, and so on and so forth. And so Socrates does all of that for us. So the first thing we do is we can actually just compile our program. So um, uh, let's see, I called it add to 10. OK. Um, I forgot to pass in a flag. OK. So it said, OK, I have compiled this program. Uh, number of constraints is 3. So we have the two gates that I showed you, and then the final constraint is the equality constraint. Um, so then now that we actually compiled our code, uh, this already created our constraints, our, our, pol our polynomials, our circuits, and so on. So now we can actually have the setup process. So the setup is basically uh, we're trying to create that secret value that we're going to encrypt um, such that the verifier can use it to verify, and the prover can, uh, can use it to generate proofs that the verifier will accept. So we can do it pretty simple. Um, so now that we've compiled it, we can just say setup. And this is the, that secret number encrypted. So, and it actually shows you exactly what that is. Um, this is public information, so the prover and the verifier would have this. 
Okay, so now that we have that, um, we can give it uh, we can give it a witness. So witness meaning that so x times y uh, plus four equals ten. I actually know a witness, meaning that I know the answer to that problem. I know what x and y is. Um, so I can just do uh, Socrates compute witness. Um, I think the flag is dash a, and I can say that. Um, x times y plus 4 equals 10. Okay, well, I can say that a is, um, sorry, x is 2, and then y is 3, so 2 times 3 equals 6, plus 4 equals 10. So I can compute this witness. Okay, cool. So it computed this witness. Uh, and so what it actually did is also it generated uh, a JSON file for me that actually has this information as well. Let's see. Oh, can I get my directory back? Uh, let's see. So here's my witness, and it basically said that uh, my first variable, um, so x is 2, y is 3, the intermediary output, so the temporary output is 6, uh, and finally we can uh, then be able to basically have this constraint. Okay, cool. So now that we have, we computed a witness, now we're ready to generate a proof. Uh, so now that we have a solution, we can very easily make that into a proof. So Socrates, Generate proof. And this is actually our proof. So remember how I kept saying L times R minus O equals H times T? So these are actually those exact same points to make that equation work. So um, here the, uh, the terminology is slightly different. Our L became, became A, our R became B, but it's the same concept. So we have left wires times right wires minus output wires equals H times T. Um, and so these are those exact same points. And this is actually our proof. Um, so uh, how do we verify this? Well, Socrates actually allows you to export your verifier. So I actually forgot the command for that. So that's why I have things written down. So oh, it was just actually export a verifier. Um, and so what this did is it actually created a Solidity file for me, created this file for me, which has all those points, uh, meaning that it has that setup, it has the public keys for verification, and this is a Solidity file that I can actually just deploy to my network. So I'm actually going to do exactly that. So I took this verifier.sol, I'm gonna drag it over to my smart contracts folder under, smart, under contracts. I'm gonna replace my old one. Okay, cool. Um, and I've also wrote some tests to see if it works. So our tests are basically, if I give it some garbage values, so this is a, so left t um, times right minus output equals h times t, so these are the exact same points. Um, so my test is, if I give it some garbage values, it'll fail. If I give it some true values, it will not. Um, so. Let's generate another proof so I can kind of copy paste. Actually, um, so another thing that Socrates does is every time you generate a proof, it has this proof.json file. So I can just go ahead and copy that and stick it into my test. This is kind of an annoying manual step, but I'm sure someone could automate this. So if I just stick it here uh, and format it, <laughs> um, let's see if my test pass. Um, I actually have two tests, which is kind of, so this one as well. So I can see if my tests pass, and because of Solidity, we know how to test that fairly easily. Um, oops, it's a little hard with one hand. <laughs> okay, so um, I have Ganache running my left side, I have my screen that I'm about to run some tests in here, so I can just do truffle test. Uh, test verifier. And it is unhappy about the fact that I don't have ganache. Okay, one sec. And it's gonna compile my verifier.soul. Hopefully it'll pass. Cool, and something's happening. Okay, awesome. So we have a way to basically say, okay, we have a Solidity file, 
we can run some tests on it, um, and it'll accept the proofs that we can generate with Socrates. Cool. Um, so uh, now we can actually deploy it. So we have our thing. Um, truffle migrate. Um, so the whole point here is um, if you're able to guess what, well, not guess, if you're able to give me a proof that x times y uh, plus 4 equals 10, you're going to get an NFT out. <laughs> so we've deployed this contract. Um, hopefully the, uh, the gods of uh, MetaMask are going to work, which is, OK, right now it's not working. <laughs> um, so um, I'm able to have MetaMask working in my local network. OK, cool. So now that we have that, we have a proof that we generated from Socrates. Uh, which is the same one that we use for tests, so we can just kind of copy paste that. And let's see. If this proof is correct, I should get an NFT out. Oh my gosh, it worked. So, uh, cool. So, this is <laughs> a pretty simple example of how you can actually have smart contracts using SNARKs. The cool thing about it is Every time I generate a proof, um, there is randomness involved in creating the blinding factors. And so if I am going to generate a new proof, um, the numbers are different, meaning that uh, let's say I have an actual treasure hunt on chain and someone actually figures out the answer uh, and posts it. Well, Ethereum is all public. But um, you, you can't. You, you can basically like every you, like you have a different person have a unique proof for the same answer with the same like plain text answer um, and have them submit a proof. So basically, um, you can't you can't cheat because <laughs> you can keep track of uh, previously submitted proofs. Um, and uh, just because I submitted this proof uh, doesn't mean that there aren't other unique unseen proofs before for the same value. So I can actually make a real treasure hunt on Ethereum such that you can't actually cheat, despite the fact that everything's public. So my whole point here is um, snarks are actually fairly accessible. You can do it today. You can do it very simply. It took us about 10 minutes. <laughs> so it, there is a bit of a setup process, which is a bit annoying. Um, Socrates is probably, right now, the most advanced DSL, so domain-specific language. If you're, to going to, if you're going to be doing something like in, for more production, there are different libraries and tools out there that are way more efficient. So Bellman, for example, is the rest of the implementation used by uh, the Zcash team. It's not a domain-specific language, so you do have to uh, you have to manually construct your circuits, which you know is not the most intuitive thing. But then you have like massive uh, performance gains. Um, the other thing why Socrates is not performant is kind of Ethereum's fault. Ethereum doesn't support the curves it actually needs to move to a newer proving system. So right now the new newer proving system is called Groth 16. Um, it requires what's called par uh, uh, parent-friendly curves that Ethereum does not support. Um, and uh, so yeah, the fact that we don't have faster snarks is actually Ethereum's fault. Um, the other thing that I want you to note is that to generate a proof, it took us no time. So I can keep doing this over and over again, and it's fairly instantaneous. And the reason for that is because um, our snark is very small. It's only three constraints. Um, if I were to do a Sudoku puzzle, for example, it would be about 700 constraints, and it would be also almost instantaneous. You would ha like not even feel it, not even feel any latency at all. So people complain sometimes that oh, but Zcash is, takes forever. Um, Zcash does take about two seconds, which I guess you will feel. But Zcash also has uh, about. Well, I guess I had to have uh, 500,000 constraints, and their first version had 2 million constraints. Um, so my point is, is that snarks are actually really powerful, really powerful for simple problems. Um, so uh, do not be afraid of the fact that they take a long time, because they don't. So I know that was really fast, but <laughs> um, do people have any questions?